And welcome again to The Big Match. Hope you like those new opening titles and, of course, that you're going to find plenty to enjoy in the coming hour as well. Our three matches today are West Ham against the First Division leaders Liverpool. We shall support that with Leeds United against the Spurs. And our bonus match this week is a bonus in particular for all you exiled Scots. It's that great Glasgow battle between Rangers and Celtic. But first today, it's off to Upton Park for the game between West Ham and Liverpool. It's one that's pulled in West, one of West Ham's biggest crowds of the season, and it sees the welcome return to the game of two players. For Liverpool, it's their skipper Tommy Smith, who injured his ribs in a car crash in November, and he's missed six games. And for West Ham, Dudley Tyler, now back in action after a troublesome shoulder injury. But even so, West Ham come to this uh, difficult match very much under strength, missing their midfield pair, Billy Bonds and Trevor Brooking. So Kevin Locke comes in at number four, and Tyler is 10 and Bobby Ferguson has held off the challenge of Peter Grotier to keep his place in goal. As for Liverpool, something of a surprise here. Manager Bill Shankly has left out his leading scorer John Toshak and Phil Boersma takes his place at 10 and Phil Thompson is at number 3 in place of Alec Lindsay who has the flu. But of course Keegan is there and Highway is there and that could well be a threat for West Ham United. But now the 34,000 crowd waits for referee Ray Tinkler of Boston to get the game underway. So West Ham then kick off defending the goal to our left against this incredible Liverpool machine that has lost only two of its last 32 games and in fact has been top of the first division, the hardest division in the world to win since September the 23rd. But now it's Eris and the ball going off Emden Hughes for a throw to West Ham. Not only that, they've won all five of their last uh, games against West Ham United, including 3-2 up at Anfield in September. Ares now, but the cross going behind for the goal kick to Liverpool. Ray Clements. Short one to Emlyn Hughes. A grey and drizzling afternoon here. The ball will pick up a little bit of pace off the turf. Try to get in first. But it'll be more again, but the whistle had gone for the foul by Hughes on Eris. No advantage played to the dismay of Bobby Moore, but it's a free kick to West Ham. Eris. Played on again for Holland. Back for Eris. A chance for a quick cross. Robson just getting his head to it. Locked. Back for Tyler, now will he get a shot in? He does indeed, but straight at Clements. From Dudley Tyler. Boersma, the back header. Lampard, but Boersma again. Lampard, and Locke. Moore. Great spirit about this West Ham side. Best to Locke. Tyler outside him, but this is best again. Still with Clyde Best, and again into the arms of Clements. But good, positive attacking play by West Ham United. Keegan, trying to touch that on again for Boersma, and Keegan, and very nearly got to that one. And Cormac just over. And West Ham, if anything, embarrassed just a little by Bobby Moore himself there. Moore, who was trying to dribble his way out of trouble and lost it fractionally to Keegan, and it began to go away from West Ham from that moment. But a goal kick. And Bobby Ferguson to take it. Ares is head up. Off Robson, Liverpool throw. Keegan. And two good pieces of defensive play there by Taylor. Holland, Taylor now, played for Bobby Moore, Best glanced on, hopefully into the path of Tyler, but Smith was there, Lampard, and Smith again, very reassuring figure for Liverpool in the back four again. McDowell, no chances taken, Best, for Tyler. Now Tyler caught Smith out there, and it's Tyler again with the shot. Oh, just passed. A 
Brilliant run by Dudley Tyler. May really, when he fooled Tommy Smith, who'd half committed himself. Clemens, let it be said, came out so quickly, making it difficult for Tyler. And Clements, by coming off his line so swiftly, caused the West Ham forward to shoot just wide. So a quarter of an hour gone, no score. Holland to best. And now for Eris. Holland again. And the ball off the West Ham player, another goal kick. Quite a good ratio of seats at West Ham these days with this new stand, and that really is where the money comes in. Lock following in quickly. Well, the leadership of Tommy Smith so valuable to Liverpool, though he's been nearly caught out there by Dudley Tyler. Best up again well, beating Smith in the air, but Smith getting the ball back again. Keegan, dainty little player, and here's the pace of Highway. His shirt pulled back by Lampard, but still he went on. And the referee, I suppose, playing the advantage there. He must have seen it, and uh, then he had the shirt pulled off his back, in fact. But the referee felt that uh, Highway had kept control and uh, was in with a chance. It's the most delicate of all rules for referees to apply the advantage. Tyler. Again, lock going on outside him. Oh, and he tried to get it back to him. Phil Bursma to Steve Highway with Keegan and Bursma in the middle and Cormac coming in as well and here's Thompson not too happy with that one Phil Thompson former England youth international talking about the uh, fighting midfield on the field for West Ham this afternoon uh, and mentioning the two lads who are out of the side Trevor Brooking and Billy Bonds in the centre of the picture, just uh, above that hoarding there. And Peter Grotier, the reserve goalkeeper on the right, Johnny Lyle, the coach on the left. Best offside. And so it's a free kick. No more consistent defender in uh, in the British Isles than this fellow Emlyn Hughes. And also he scored ten very useful goals for Liverpool this season. Air is just kept in for Holland. Best and Robson again ahead of him. It's a good run by Holland. Back now for Tyler. Best. And now Ares. Now if he crosses it quickly and he has. This could be a goal for Holland and they've somehow between them. Robson and Holland couldn't get above it to knock it down. Just a matter of a couple of inches too high for them. And Pat Holland's header going above that Liverpool crossbar. But again a good and impressive break by, break by West Ham. People saying to me as we came in, don't write them off because Bonds and Brooking are out. And certainly that seems to be the sort of spirit on the field at the moment. More. Oh, now Best and he's onside. Now can he do something with this? Clemens slipped and so too did Best. And a golden chance, or at least what looks a golden chance if you haven't got to take it yourself, was lost to Clyde Best and West Ham. But here's Tyler now with a chance to turn it in again. Best now, can he make up for it? 
crossed again there this time towards Aris and towards Holland oh, and that very nearly caught Brian Robson on the forehead Locke now trying to turn it back once more as Smith went charging into him but the ball at last safely in the arms of Ray Clements and away goes Boersma Thompson Gallagher Lloyd and again it's Boersma touched nicely inside there for Thompson Cormac and Holland played back carefully and neatly there to Ferguson and now it's Bobby Moore Kevin Locke Moore It's Callaghan. Cormac. Highway. Keegan's in the middle. Boersma coming in fast as well. And Thompson. Still though, Highway. And now Cormac. Turn there to Thompson. And in goes Lawler. Chris Lawler, so dangerous coming forward. And I suppose there's hardly been a more prolific scorer amongst fullbacks than he. Over 50 in his first class career. Robson. Locke. Young player who's got through a lot of work. Oh, and there's a muscle injury there on Kevin Locke, just as he was about to look up and cross that ball, which almost certainly I would think means that he'll have to go off. Which indeed is a blow for West Ham, particularly now as Edmund Hughes coming forward for Liverpool. Callaghan. Thompson, Highway, still Highway, and the whistle has gone because the referee, well Highway hadn't heard it and I hadn't heard it, but uh, the referee had gone across to uh, see what had happened to Kevin Locke, and West Ham substitute Clive Charles getting changed there, he, of course, is a man for the back four, as opposed to Kevin Locke, who's been in the middle coming forward. So there might well have to be some rearrangement if indeed Locke has to go off. And indeed, a sad sight indeed, because Locke, in fact, had been playing so well with so much fire and enthusiasm in the opening 37 minutes of the game. But he's got to go. And Clive Charles will be coming off. And a drop ball. Well, it fell for West Ham, and now it's gone for Thompson. Callaghan, a long way back to Clements. Taylor's header, Phil Thompson. Peter Cormack. To Tommy Smith. Holland and now Brian Robson so much is going to depend on uh, Brian Robson's sharp shooting skills in the penalty area for West Ham now best and Tyler coming in hoping to get it on the volley and it didn't fall quickly enough for him because those Liverpool defenders were coming in fast, he wanted it to fall just a little quicker. And he, so he had to take it just a little sooner than he wanted to. Lawler. Clive Charles. Dudley Tyler. Nice little touch there. And now best. Can Tyler get to this one? Lloyd is cutting across there. Robson and Best have gone into the middle and Robson trying to back flick there but it didn't come off Best now Harris into injury time at the end of the first half the real moment to make one count and they won't do it West Ham because it's Liverpool away now with Kevin Keegan Bursma and Highway up in support still with Kevin Keegan and finally uh, Taylor coming across 
forced to give away the corner with another sparkling little run by the man who's made such an impact on the first division in the past 12 months, Kevin Keegan. Highway, and Keegan always dangerous at the near post, something that uh, West Ham would need to watch. Again, curling towards that near post, and the fist of Ferguson. Best, getting it away to Eris. Hughes's feet were rather high there. Robson right back there. McDowell. Kept his head and got it away, but only as far as Hughes. Holland. Robson. Smith. Referee looking hard at his watch for the end of the first half as Liverpool get another throw. That strong defence has looked so unyielding for Liverpool this afternoon. Although let it also be said that they've caused very few problems for the West Ham defence either. Lloyd. And there goes the whistle for half time. The first half without goals, but with plenty of skillful football to it. One or two chances, but they were at a premium. The best of all fell to Clyde Best when he was right through and uh, couldn't find a way past Clements. Still to come on the big match this afternoon, plenty more for you to enjoy, including Leeds United against Spurs. But the half-time score here at Upton Park is West Ham United nil, Liverpool nil, and we'll bring you the second half in just a couple of minutes. All right, love. So it'll be Liverpool then who kick off the start of the second half with four profitable visits uh, to London in the league behind them so far this season. With victories at Chelsea and Spurs and draws at Palace and Arsenal. And so far, although put under a little bit of pressure in that first half by a very spirited West Ham attack, looking very comfortable in defence for all that. And now it's Boersma. Keegan, who's put on a new shirt at this uh, during the half-time interval. And Highway. A little chip there, but too high for Boersma. Cormac turning it back there for Lawler. Boersma again. Cormac first time. McDowell getting his head to it and getting it away. And Robson galloping after it. But the throw to Liverpool. Robson. Lampard played nicely there for Charles. Turned on again nicely there for Lampard and a good cross by him. And Tyler went in there. Only half expecting it to get it, I uh, suspect. And didn't quite connect with it the way he would have wanted to. But again, Liverpool get it away. And Callaghan finds Keegan. Boers for up ahead of him. And there's Highway now. In a great chance now for Liverpool. Still with Highway. And the save by Ferguson. Great save by Ferguson. The sort the goalkeepers hate when they're low and close to you. Now, this could be a quick break for West Ham. Best is there, Eris is up there as well. But Hughes, as ever, is back for Liverpool, but West Ham get a throw. Well, it wasn't right back over Holland's head, and so it's a foul throw. Callaghan. To Cormac. Cormac again, crossing it in a useful looking one as well, Moore getting behind it, Charles helping it away. Tyler right back there, but only uh, half fighting at that one, and so Liverpool get possession again with Ian Callaghan. Smith. 
everybody now bar Clements in the West Ham half of the field Keegan was right in there here's Hughes highway on the far side Larry Lloyd to Phil Thompson highway taking it well on his body and then sweeping past McDowell brilliant And the little man has done it again, Kevin Keegan. But he'd be the first to admit, as you can see, going across the highway, the tremendous contribution of highway with his pace and his accuracy of that cross when he went past McDowell. The pinpointed centre and Keegan on the end of it. So that makes the score. West Ham nil, Liverpool won with exactly a quarter of an hour to go. Lampard, Tyler, and now Borsma, Keegan, And now Callaghan. I suppose if West Ham fans want to bolster themselves a little bit on this miserable afternoon, this goal down with a little over five minutes left, they'll cast their mind back to Boxing Day when they were two down close to the end against Spurs and came back for a 2-2 draw. McDowell. Hughes getting up well, but he could only get it as far as Eris, and there's Best in there as well. And it wouldn't fall for Tyler. Highway touching it on and finding uh, Peter Cormack. Keegan. Still Keegan attacking that defence so well. So full of confidence as he's every right to be with the season he's had behind him. And now it comes to Borsma. Across again and Keegan up once more. But that time the pressure from McDowell was a little too great. And the referee says that the ball glanced off McDowell's head as well. And so Liverpool get a corner on the far side. It'll be Steve Highway taking it. Looking again for Keegan, who's made that famous run of his towards the near post, but it'll be McDowell instead. Harris for the Hughes. Five minutes left now for West Ham to save the game. Again, Hughes is there. And now Callaghan. Boersma, Hughes, and on again for Highway. Now can he flick his way past Taylor? He can. Beautiful acceleration again by Highway. And foiled at the very last by a rapid recovery by the West Ham number five. But Highway in full flow really is the most exciting sight. And he must have gone thumping over Taylor's feet as Taylor got in that tackle to uh, turn the ball behind for the corner. So the referee insisting that if he's well enough to go off the field, he must go off the field and allow the game to go on. Liverpool get the corner. Callaghan. Still Callaghan, so difficult to shake off the ball. Highway fit enough to come back on again. Just about three minutes to go now, and now Liverpool get a free kick on the far side. Highway to take it. Looking all the while for a teammate, hoping it might be Keegan, I suppose. Callaghan. Good ball there again by Callaghan. 
but West Ham get the throw. Charles. Lampard. Moore. Oh, and Tyler tried to flick that over the head of Smith. And best a little slow to react to that one as uh, Thompson can bring it away. Taylor. Moore. Asking best to go forward, but uh, again Larry Lloyd up there, so coolly and clearly above him. And now Thompson really pressurising Hughes, and the ball going off Hughes. For a West Ham corner. Taylor's coming in with a late run there for West Ham. Best is hoping to get up there, and it goes behind indeed for another corner. But so many white shirts are back, and for so long this afternoon they snap shut like a great steel door as West Ham have come forward and there's so little time left Moore he's alright he's onside is Holland and the crowd wanting him to cross it a bit quicker than that McDowell Charles Robson Charles going on and on and Smith that mighty man right back there again. Lampard with the throw. Tommy Taylor to plant another ball towards that Liverpool penalty area. Robson too high for him and so Lloyd gets there instead and it's Liverpool on the break now with Keegan. Again this little man gets in the shot as Ferguson goes down. And West Ham knowing that there's so little time for them. Lampard, he tried to turn it one side of Lawler. And Liverpool get a free kick. Taken quickly and well there by Cormac. Boersma. Across by him and too high even for Keegan. Taylor. Eris. Taylor again. As we go into injury time at the end of the game. With Liverpool... Looking as though they're going to take another two points out of London. Highway for them, the man who made the only goal of the game, scored by Keegan. Still with Highway. Hughes back to support it. Highway again. And then Holland. As the final whistle goes, and that's two more points for Liverpool, which by the way they're putting their arms in the air, pleases them no end with the scorer of the only goal of the game being number seven, Kevin Keegan for Liverpool, which puts him into double figures, making it ten for the season, but made unmistakably by the running and crossing of Steve Highway. And so we come to the final scoreline here at Upton Park today, and it reads, West Ham United nil, Liverpool one. So, defeat then for West Ham. Liverpool stay top of the first division, three points ahead of Arsenal and five ahead of Leeds, of course, who both won yesterday. Uh, now, for his view on the game, Jimmy Hill. Well, one could say that West Ham were unlucky yesterday to meet the league leaders without Bonds and Brookie in the middle of the field and then to lo you lose young Kevin Locke so soon after the start of the game when he was playing so well. One could put it down to bad luck. But on the other hand, I was trying to identify the difference between a team like West Ham in the middle of the table and one that deserves to be three points ahead on the top like Liverpool. It wasn't easy because it wasn't a great day for Liverpool. But on the other hand, I picked out a couple of things to try to illustrate that point. First of all, the extra determination, I think, that the Liverpool Liverpool forwards had up front when they were in a position where they might make a scoring chance. Highway first of all, we pick up Tommy Smith laying the ball through to him, but look at the aggression here. That fierce running to force his way past Lampard there, whatever happens, and his determination to go in and get a shot in. Contrast that with Clyde Best who breaks through in the first half. I think he thought maybe he was in an offside position here, but it's a fine ball from Bobby Moore, and I think he was onside. But it's all hesitancy after that. Almost a, a non-acceptance of the responsibility there and wishing that he wasn't in that position. That's the kind of uh, lack of determination that really will keep you in the middle of the table, and those that have got it 
get to the top. But more than that, when it came to scoring chances, uh, Liverpool only had a couple in the whole of the game, but they took theirs so well. West Ham had two or three before Liverpool really had woken up. One of them fell to Pat Holland, and he was almost too shy, too nervous to feel that he should be in there scoring that goal. He does very well to get up, and he is challenged in this position. Best does well here to hold off that challenge. And a good first-time ball in there from Ares. But once it's there, to be headed up and down there on the target, Holland comes in, almost feels that he's done well enough to get his head to the ball and that who is he to score a goal in that position. Now contrast that with Keegan. Once again we get a chance to look at the determination of Highway and the pace as he goes up that line past McDowell. Admittedly, when the ball comes over, you'll see that Keegan was unmarked in that position, but still, notice the way he gets up above the ball. All he can think about is getting that ball on that target. Nothing else is going to take his attention away from that. That was the difference in finishing, really, finishing power in yesterday's match. But of the West Ham team, I have to pick out Bobby Moore. He had a marvellous game, trying to make up, really, for the absence of Bonds and Brooking in the middle of the field. He was playing farther forward. He did so much that was so good, and he played with all the youthful zest of a teenager in this game and that's why I select this bit of action when he takes the chance to catch Keegan who streaks away here but Bobby Moore says oh no you're not there's still a bit of life in the old dog there and I'm going to take the ball away and this lovely shot now of Bobby Moore pointing both ways I don't think they really found out yesterday which way he was going to distribute when he finally passed because he really did uh, play the ball about the field quite beautifully but what about that man, Kevin Keegan? I think probably that's the difference, one of the main differences between West Ham and Liverpool. They've found a Keegan this season, and West Ham are still looking, despite Pop Robson's goals. We know they still need a couple of players for their team. But if only they could come up with a player like this. Here he is on the left wing. I think this little shot best illustrates his ability to go all over the field, play everywhere, and constantly worry defenders. Just watch the pace of that pass. Just beautifully judged to tempt the full back in. And who is it who's now going to bob up in the six yard box? None other than Kevin Keegan. He gets up and he gets it down, this time just fractionally wide of the post. That's the kind of player, of course, that West Ham are looking for, but the, it's easier said to find them than it is really to go out and get them and bring them back to your club. What about Liverpool as champions? Bill Shankly yesterday felt they hadn't played well because he said they didn't make many chances, but on the other hand, they look very resilient, very tough, very strong with Tommy Smith back. But there's one little thought I want to leave in your minds. When a team wins a championship, it often has little bits of luck on the way. Yesterday, Liverpool found West Ham without Bonds, Brooking, and then, as I said at the start, they lo lost young Kevin Locke. That's the kind of luck you have when you're winning championships, and you don't notice it until it runs out. Well, our bonus match today is the one for all you exiled Scots, and inevitably it drew the largest soccer crowd of the day in Britain, 65,000 who went along to Ibrox Park in Glasgow for the clash between Rangers and Celtic. Now, Celtic had dominated their recent battles, winning the last six. Now the pictures come from Scottish TV, commentator Arthur Monford, Rangers in the dark shirts, Celtic in their familiar hoops, a match decided in the very last minutes. some help into Pond. Chance for McDonald. Appeals for the penalty and it's given. McDonald going through, tumbling quickly, brought down by McCluskey. 23 and a half minutes played in the first half. Celtic protesting. Mr. Patterson saying to his teammates, no point in arguing. Photographers massed behind the goal. Derek Parlain, Rangers top scorer, his first Rangers Celtic match. Penalty kick. It's there. Second time, but it's there. His first effort was a poor one. Spun off Williams' foot. Followed up, turned the ball into the left hand side of the net. After 24 minutes played, the Rangers won Celtic nil. With Brogan on his left.
Vaughan brought down by Greg. Free kick to Celtic. Shot on Callan to Brogan. McCarry. The size there again. Sliding tackle. Celtic trying to turn on the pressure here. Callahan putting it into Deans. Deans a back header. Now Grish going up. First time shot is a goal. Dixie Deans scores at a flexion from Tom side. One each. A tremendous shot from Deans. He hit it with everything he had. McCoy McCoy moved across but the ball ricocheted off a Rangers defender and simply raged into the net and the teams are level at 1-1 two minutes to play long ball through to Pan Lane McDonald stepping in Pan Lane there with Connolly what a smash! Back out to Young finally. Khan shouting for it. Over it comes. Headed in by Khan! That's a goal! Khan the score on away behind the goal. A minute to play. A superb move by Young. He waited until the exact moment to put that ball across to Khan. He's headed forty past Williams into the net. To give us a truly sensational finish here at Ibrox. So Rangers have broken that uh, Celtic hoodoo at last, winners there by two goals to one. Well, next we come to your letters, and this is the moment to say, I suppose, how very nice it is again to be getting so many letters from uh, Australian friends who seem to be enjoying the big match and indeed their football as much as ever they did. The first card, in fact, comes from uh, a nice picture postcard from uh, Western Australia, uh, from Perth, in fact, and it comes from D. Price and C. Nilthorpe. One of them's a Millwall fan, the other is a Brighton fan, and they say, could we possibly show the goals from their recent meeting at the Den, when it was certainly a day to be a Millwall fan, here Millwall all in white. Alfred. Well, they allowed that uh, advantage to go because Alder was there. Now, can Alder cross this one? There's Brown again, and it's a goal! Steve Brown! Kitchener. And Gaul turning it back, and now Wood, can he get in? Wood! Oh, a tremendous goal! A tremendous goal by Alfred! Alders flick on there for Poland. Wood in the middle. And Wood again! Yes! Alfred! Well, that should certainly have pleased one Australian fan, if not the other one. But last week's Chelsea Derby game also raised a couple of points for us. One of them comes from Brian Kemp of 65 Straight Road, Old Windsor in Berkshire, who said he thought the Derby were a little lucky to get their opening goal there, uh, because, in fact, it came from a throw-in that should have gone to Chelsea. Let's settle that one first. Jim. Well, if ever there was a lesson for players to play to the whistle, this was it. You can see here, I think, that the ball goes off Harris's thigh, but he's appealing, and so are the other Chelsea players, for a throw. But Davis, while they're hesitating, throws the ball through there to O'Hare, and the goal directly resulted from that hesitancy by the Chelsea players. And certainly it's the thing that we keep pointing out about, the necessity to play to the whistle. Well, the other point from that game, in fact, comes from Miss Sue Nash uh, of 49 Tilmore Road, Petersfield in Hampshire, who was one of many, including Brian Clough, the manager of Derby County, who thought that Derby were a little unlucky to have a headed goal by Kevin Hector disallowed. Let's sort that one out as well. Well, on the day, I can remember that the linesman flagged 
very positively and kept it up all the while and you can see now what looked to be a good goal was in fact offside. There's Hector heading the ball in and to the right of your screen there you can see Davis in an offside position and interfering with play because he's in the six yard box. That was why it was disallowed. So the referee made the right decision there. Gerald Hurley of 11 Lansbury Crescent, Dartford in Kent, has been very impressed, he says, recently with the shooting power of Norwich City's Graham Padden, who hasn't been. And indeed he takes up Jimmy's point last week that midfield players have got to get more and more on the scoring sheet. He cites Padden as a perfect example and indeed as a warning to all Spurs fans with the League Cup final coming up. Let's have a look at what Graham Padden did with two free kicks. One against West Bromwich Albion, one against Manchester City. This is the one against West Bromwich Albion. Look, he gets great power, he curves the ball around the right hand side of that wall and it finishes up on the left hand side of the goal a tremendous uh, shot there that was in slow motion against West Brom this is Graham Padden in normal speed against Manchester City over on the his left Padden <laughs> I wonder if you know who it was who introduced Graham Padden into first class football yes it was Jim and there's an interesting point about Graham's career which might be interesting to young players who may not be making the progress they think they should. When Graham first came to Coventry as a young player, he was on the fragile side, he wasn't all that strong, and he was a winger and couldn't accelerate all that well past a fullback. But he worked so hard at his game, he was always trying to improve his strength and improve his speed, that he forced his way really into a few appearances in the Coventry team. Uh, and I think maybe he was a little surprised when Coventry transferred him to Norwich City. But he buckled down to it, really, and has made such an impression on the game since he's been at Norwich in the middle of the field now, full of strength, even with uh, more than average speed for a player and all the skill that he possessed right from the start, Graham Padden is a star. And in fact, he's beaten all his Coventry colleagues to Wembley. Well, now we move on to our third match today, and it's the visit of Spurs to Leeds United. Leeds themselves are chasing for the title. They indeed only lost once at home this season. So it was bound to be a tough one for Spurs in the misty conditions at Ellen Road, where the pictures come from Yorkshire television, where the commentator's Keith Macklin. Leeds are in the all-white strip. Hunter. Good ball for Clark. Beautifully done in for Lorimer. That's Evans took it off his toe. That's a corner. Again, the feeling that had that ball dropped on Peter Lorimer's lethal right foot, it could have been infinitely more dangerous for Spurs. He needs just that little more time and precision on the left. But there's a corner out of it. In! Jones! It was deflected, and Jones was the man who put it in. An in-swinging corner from Lorimer. A gentle deflection from just outside the six-yard line, and Jones there to put it in. Remno, pretty fast pace this first half. Clark and Hunter leads spraying the passes about. The opening isn't yet, but it's good possession football. That's a push, an appeal for a penalty, but rejected by Mr. Burns. Jones went down, Bremner got to that, he's having to wait for the offside men to come back, he's going himself, that's not going for a corner, Naylor getting there. It still isn't cleared, it's Lorimer from Bremner, right across for Jones again and Jones deciding to leave it. Straight back, Cherry's up, England was there, Giles, Giles, down it goes, yes it is, the penalty is awarded, Gilzean the man adjudged to have brought him down, the Spurs players protesting vigorously that Giles took a dive. and Tottenham Hotspur obviously rather aggrieved about that. 
The Tottenham players thought that Johnny Giles took a dive, but Mr Burns, whose opinion matters, didn't. And it's Lorimer taking over from the normal penalty taker Giles to make it 2-0 for Leeds. Shivers. Perryman. Giles to Clark. It's three against two. Jones on the right. Lorimer on the left. Jennings out, and Jennings has saved it. Good play by the goalkeeper. Peter Lorimer appealing for something rather vague. I think certainly the referee's sympathies will be with Jennings there. Jennings again coming right off his line. It was three against two. taking that on the burst in goes Gilzean gets it and oh my word Gilzean was an inch away from a goal there Harvey had come off his line Gilzean this touch artist of Tottenham Hotspur got his head to it and it just crept past the post Harvey could only stand and watch it Perryman Bates Hunter wanting Cherry to go square up towards Clark good ball from Clark finding Bates Bremner Carl Oramus herring into position but headed away well by Knowles to Pierce Bremner has it. Lorimer. And Giles. Narini. Up towards Clark and Jones. Jones over the top. Again the ball barely parting Clark's hair. And Jones underneath it. through Knowles, Pierce, Knowles again, Hunter's out of the action, he's rolling about on the ground, there's the cross, hitting Bremner, Giles, Hunter on the ground in a fair deal of fame, but play continuing, put up towards Clark, there's Les Cocker dying to get on and attend to Hunter, but the referee has not... There's Gilzean! It had to happen! It had to happen! Gilzean getting beautifully under that cross from Cyril Knowles. And now there can be a tension for Hunter who was out of the way all the time that was going on. But at Gilzean who was so close a couple of minutes ago got that in from a superb cross by Knowles although David Harvey got a hand to it. Well, that's how it finished. Spurs beaten by two goals to one. But they were a little bit upset about that Leeds United penalty. And two quotes from this morning's papers. Uh, Billy Nicholson, the Spurs manager, says, uh, Giles conned the referee. I didn't think it was a penalty. Alan Gilzean, the man who was really on the spot there, says, Giles took a dive. I hardly touched him. Jimmy Hill. What we have to remember is that there are nine penalty offences. One of them is for pushing. And even if a player does just as much as that, then a referee is entitled to give a penalty if it occurs in the penalty area. But having said all that, we'll have a look at it in a moment, but even if Alan Gilzean did do a push, I didn't see anything in it that could turn Giles over in as many circles as he eventually rolled. Let's look at it now. Ball's headed out. In fact, Gilzean was in at the start of the incident there. He comes in, misses clearing the ball a little bit, and it runs off. There's what the referee might have seen, the slightest push, 
and there you can see Giles going over like that. And if that happens to him in boots, all I can say is I wouldn't like to see what's going to happen to him if ever he plays in roller skates. Well, continuing with our theme of refereeing, uh, while we were watching the West Ham match go through a little earlier in the programme, Jimmy made a point about Ray Tinkler's performance yesterday at Upton Park. I know the partisan West Ham fans were getting on at Ray Tinkler early in the game yesterday, especially when he didn't give one or two corners. But they are partisan and that's part of the fun of it. But I think I was a little more objective and I've never seen a referee throughout a game get so many decisions right. I thought he was on the spot and on the ball all the time and it's a pleasure to record it. Well, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the programme today. Next week, remember, a bumper FA Cup tie edition of the Big Match, and before it, of course, on the ball in World of Sport on Saturday lunchtime. On the Big Match next Sunday, three games from the third round, with all the excitement and all the drama that they're bound to bring us for us all to enjoy. We leave you today, though, I suppose, with that famous old cliche about it being really tough at the top, whether you're a team like Liverpool fighting for every point, or indeed merely a cameraman whose job in television is in the rain watching them do it. Larry Lloyd to Phil Thompson. Highway taking it well on his body. And then sweeping past McDowell. Brilliant.